In the previous two lectures, we have seen energy transfer between system and its surroundings in form of work. Besides work, energy transfer between a system and its surroundings can take place in form of heat. Heat is defined as a form of energy that is transferred across a system boundary due to temperature difference between the system and its surroundings. In particular, heat is transferred from a system at high temperature to a system at low temperature. That is, heat transfer will always take place from high temperature system to a low temperature system. Note that according to the thermodynamic definition of heat, a body never contains heat. Rather, heat can be identified only while crossing a system boundary. That means heat comes into picture only at the system boundary and a body or a system never stores heat or never contains heat. Now, let's look at an example. So, consider a beaker that is filled with water. Let's say that this water is at low temperature. Now we take a hot block of copper which is at high temperature and we immerse it in this low temperature water. Then what will happen is that this block of copper that is hot will cool down and the water at low temperature will warm up. And this process will continue until both copper and water are at the same temperature. That is, heat is transferred from copper block, which is at higher temperature, to water until both attain an equilibrium temperature. And once equilibrium has been attained, there is no heat transfer because there is no temperature difference between the copper block and the water. That means heat is energy transferred due to the temperature difference. If there is no temperature difference, there is no heat transfer and there is no way a body can contain or store heat. So heat will come into picture only at the system boundary when there is a temperature difference between the system and the surroundings. In this way, the thermodynamic definition of heat, the way we have defined over here, is somewhat different from the everyday usage of the word heat. Now let's look at some sign convention. So if we have a system that is separated from its surroundings by a system boundary, then we'll take heat that is added to the system that is heat transfer from the surroundings to the system we will take it to be positive and we will denote heat by letter capital Q. So this is positive heat transfer and if heat is transferred from the system to the surroundings we will take that as negative heat transfer. Similar to our convention of work so anything that we add that means any energy transfer to the system for example it may be work or it may be heat is taken to be positive in our sign convention any form of energy transfer heat or work from system to the surroundings is taken as negative and following this sign convention is easy because all you need to remember is that any form of energy transfer, heat or work, to the system is positive and from the system is negative. Many times you will hear the word heat and heat transfer. So in the context of thermodynamics, heat and heat transfer can be used interchangeably because heat will come into picture only at the system boundary and as I have stated earlier, a body can never contain heat. So heat and heat transfer terms can be used interchangeably.
Now, let's look at the modes of heat transfer. Although in thermodynamics, we are not concerned with the exact physical mechanism by which heat is transferred between the system and its surroundings. But some knowledge of the modes of heat transfer can help you in appreciating the problems that are related to engineering systems. So heat transfer may occur due to three modes. The first mode is called conduction. The second mode is called convection. And there's a third mode that is called radiation. So these are the three modes of heat transfer. Irrespective of the mode of heat transfer, heat is always transferred from a system at high temperature to a system at low temperature, whatever the mode of heat transfer is. Now, if you have two bodies that are in direct contact with each other, let's say you have a slab of copper that is in direct contact with a slab of iron. Then if copper is at higher temperature and iron block is at lower temperature, then heat transfer will take place from copper to iron in form of conduction. In fact, even if you have a temperature gradient within the copper block or iron block, then heat will transfer due to conduction. So heat transfer due to conduction is a result of collision and exchange of molecules within a body or two bodies, for example, copper and iron, which are in direct uh, contact with each other. So this is conduction. For example, you touch a hot block of copper, then the way in which heat is transferred from that copper block to your hand is conduction. Now, if you have one of the medium that is fluid, then besides this transfer of heat due to the collision or exchange of molecules, you can also have the transfer of heat due to movement of fluid. And this mode is called convection. For example, you may have a hot slab of let's say copper or any material on which there is fluid flow, then the way heat is transferred from this wall to the fluid is called convection. Example of this convective heat transfer is you've seen air flowing over a car radiator and removing heat. And that is an example of convection heat transfer. Both conduction and convection, they require a medium for heat transfer. So here we have two solids and here we have a fluid. But there's a third mode of heat transfer that is radiative heat transfer, which can transfer heat without the need of any medium. That means heat can be transferred due to radiation even in empty space or vacuum. So radiation involves heat transfer through electromagnetic waves. And radiative heat transfer can happen even in empty space. For example, heat is transferred from sun to earth in form of radiation. Although transmission of radiation does not require a medium, but emission and absorption of radiation does require a substance to be present. So that's a quick introduction to the modes of heat transfer. Now let's see that heat is a path function. So similar to work, heat is also a path function. That means if you have a system and you take the system from one equilibrium state to another equilibrium state through a path or a series of quasi equilibrium states, then the heat transfer to the system 
involved in this path taking the system from state 1 to state 2 depends upon the path taken by the system. Therefore, if we have this differential of heat, then we'll say that this differential is an inexact differential because heat is a path function. It's not a point function. Heat is not a point function like any property of the system such as pressure or volume. For the same reason, if we integrate this differential heat over the path, then it will not be equal to Q2 minus Q1. There's nothing like Q2 or Q1 because heat is not a property. For the same reason, if you have this cyclic process and you consider this cyclic integral, then recall that if we have this cyclic integral of dv, which is the differential volume, then it would be zero. But for heat, just like work, it is not equal to zero because heat is not a property of the system. Or we can say heat is a path function, just like work. So what we say is that if we want to denote heat transferred to a system during a quasi-equilibrium process, where the system is taken from state 1 to state 2, then we can denote it as Q12, where the subscript 1, 2 denotes that the system is taken from state 1 to state 2. But again, this value is going to depend on the path that the system has taken while going from state 1 to state 2, because there could be many quasi-equilibrium paths by which you can take the system from one state to the other. Earlier, we have seen that the differential work for a quasi-equilibrium change in volume of a fluid, say dW, is equal to minus PdV, that is the work done on the system. That means dV is equal to minus 1 over P dW. So what we have seen earlier is that this factor 1 over p or minus 1 over p is what we call as the integrating factor because it converts this inexact differential to an exact differential. Because heat is also a path function like work, then we can ask this question that can we find some integrating factor so that this inexact differential dq can be converted to an exact differential let's say ds and the answer is yes but for that we need to go to the second law of thermodynamics and we'll discuss this in detail when we discuss the second law but as of now just to show the similarity of heat and work the integrating factor is 1 over t where t is temperature. So if you multiply dq with 1 over t, you will get an exact differential ds where s we'll see while our discussion on the second law is called the entropy. So we'll not go into details of this until we discuss the second law, but just in the way we have seen that work that is PDV and the total work can be described as area under the path on a PV curve. Similarly, because dq can later on we'll see can be written as TDS. So if we consider a diagram of T versus S, then we'll see that heat transfer to the system can be thought of as area under the path on a TS diagram. But let us discuss this later during our discussion on the second law. Finally, note that heat has the same units of work, that is joule, and the time rate of heat transfer has the units of watt. So now that we have discussed both work and heat, 
we've seen in our discussion that heat and work have some similarities between each other for example let's look at first the similarities so heat and work are both forms of energy transfer that can be identified at the system boundary and neither heat nor work can be stored in a system so heat and work cannot be stored in a system so heat and work are similar in a way that they are both forms of energy transfer which can be identified at the system boundaries and both cannot be stored we've also seen that heat and work are path functions and the differentials dq and dw are inexact we've also seen that if we multiply this these differentials dq and dw with the respective integrating factors then both of these inexact differentials can be converted to exact or perfect differentials upon multiplication with an integrating factor so from these points it appears that heat and work are similar but despite these similarities heat and work are not same although there are some similarities and the difference comes from the fact that heat is transferred due to the difference in temperature and hence heat is a microscopic form of energy transfer whereas work is a form of energy transfer that involves change in macroscopic properties so we can say that work is a macroscopic form of energy transfer where we have change in macroscopic properties observable properties such as volume so we have seen that due to change in volume you can have work done on or by the system similarly change in area change in length and all of these observable macroscopic properties come from macroscopic measurements and these macroscopic measurements inherently involve some kind of statistical averaging so if you recall our lecture on microscopic and macroscopic point of view there we discussed that upon making a macroscopic observation all different uh, modes or coordinates are averaged out and what we are left with is a macroscopic variable and change in that macroscopic observable quantities such as volume area or length and the energy transfer involved during that change of microscopic uh, quantities or macroscopic properties is defined as work energy transfer that results due to a difference in temperature is called heat and that is a microscopic form of energy transfer so we can say that work is a form of energy transfer that is driven by anything except temperature but recall that in classical thermodynamics we do not use this microscopic point of view to distinguish heat and work so we don't do not use this microscopic uh, viewpoint in our classical thermodynamic approach but although such kind of uh, distinction can help in better understanding so in classical thermodynamics heat and work are different because work can be totally converted to heat but the opposite is not true so heat cannot be totally converted to work so work can be totally converted to heat for example if you rub your hands then 
the all the work that you've done will get converted to heat but the opposite is not true and there are limitations of conversion of heat to work for which we need to look at the second law of thermodynamics so that's how we can distinguish heat and work with this understanding of uh, work and heat we are now all set to study the first and second law of thermodynamics in the upcoming lectures